back again, and we got an interview with another driver, and your name is? Kara. All right, Kara. Well, thank you so much, Kara, for keeping this country moving. It, drivers have a special place in my heart. I think I've shared that with you. We've had quite a few conversations about that. Now, Kara, how long have you been driving? I've been driving total about 11 years. 11 years. 11. And I saw I saw that picture you sent me of you back in the day with that FLD in the flatbed. Um, yeah. Now, tell you what, that flatbed hauling, uh, that's that's some tough hauling. My my granddaddy and my daddy both pulled flatbed for many years. I remember, you know, getting smacked with, when I'd go out with them every now and then, getting smacked with a strap and, you know, cranking down the binders and all that stuff. Throwing those big, heavy lumber tarps. Yeah, I remember that's that. It. That's it. That's it. That's it. So what kind of cargo do you haul? You did a flatbed back in the day. What kind of, what, what do you, what do you haul today? What do you, what do you haul today? I pull a 53 foot reefer. Okay. And so in the reefer, like, what do you, is it food? Is it, you know, pharmaceuticals? Is it like, obviously something that needs to be chilled. I haul produce. Okay. Uh, whatever pays good, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So why'd you get into trucking? Um, Actually, I loved them since I was a little bitty kid. And um, I kind of accidentally got into it. Um, I took a friend of mine down to Richmond to get his truck. And his boss asked me, could I drive a truck? And I was about 19 years old. And I said, no. I said, I, I can't even drive a straight shift car. And uh, he said, you want to learn? So he put me in a triaxle dump truck, a, a, a two-stick triaxle dump truck. It was a Mac. You learned in a two with a two stick. Yeah. Like you, I, I mean, you have to be super talented to do that after you've been driving all these years. Well, then um, my friend, he actually drove a tractor and trailer and then he kind of worked with me. That was before we had schools. That was before we had um, CDLs. I mean, we didn't even have you had your show. Did you get your chauffeur's license? Yes. That's what my daddy got. Daddy's like, we didn't have CDLs. I got my chauffeur's license. No. And um, it, it changed a lot, especially when I took the time off to raise my son. When I come back, it was like, oh, my goodness. Um, such a big change from, from when I drove the first time. Very, very much change. Change in the drivers. Um, change in the way things are done. Uh, a lot more federal control, if you will. Um, a lot different. Nice. I a two stick like that's impressive, Kara. I mean, I mean, you know, talk about uh, putting you in the uh, most complicated scenario out the gate. I bet. Uh, I bet floating and splitting gears with a thirteen or eighteen speed was a breeze after that. Oh yeah. So, what but is now your automatic? Oh, yeah. How do you feel about that? <laughs> Let me ask you that. How do you feel about two things? One, the auto, you know, the automatic transmissions coming from, uh, you know, um, you know, 13 speeds and, and, and 18 speeds and, uh, and also, you know, the integrated engine brakes back in the day when you should, you were driving that FLD, I bet it had a pretty loud Jake. Uh, yes. how, how do you feel about those two things kind of, you know, taking over? Well, when I, when I come back, they told me that they had automatics. And I was like, eee. And she says, that's what all the drivers do. Do they drive them? And the first couple of weeks I was out in California coming off of those steep hills out there, I was really a nervous wreck because, but of course you can gear down automatics too. A lot of people don't realize that, but you do have a manual on an automatic as well. So you can gear them down, but of course, you now your engine retarders are so good. A lot of times, you know, you, you do fine. And there's really not any hill I won't go off of now. Cabbage, all of them, <laughs> all of them. Well, um, you know, those, those engine brakes are, are integrated in now. You just hit the button and you, I mean, you feel the, you feel it torque back and it's like, man, where's the sound at? Now I'll tell you something, there's something sweet about a Jake brake. If you ask me, yes. uh, I mean that, you know, we've talked about me getting a truck and I, that's going to happen. And I'm going to make sure I have one of the original Jacobs brakes in there. Um, and straight so, pipe. 
that is straight pipes, seven or eight inch at seven inch minimum straight pipes. Let's go. Um, why did you get into trucking? Well, I don't, I've always loved them since I was a little girl. Nobody in my family does it that I know of other than me, but I've always loved them. And they actually say it actually saved my life. Really? Uh, How so? That's another story. Well, um, why don't you I, give me the, why don't you give me the cliff notes version of it? And you don't well, have to, but uh, you that's something pretty that's something pretty strong to say. I got to know something about that. Well, I I love trucking so much it kind of kept me away from things like alcohol and stuff like that that was not good for me. I'll put it that way. Wow. It, it totally saved my life. And I love it. I love it as much then today as I did then. I wow. love to tr- love to meet people, love to help people. Um a lot of people don't realize that trucks are the backbone of this country um i have straightened people out on putting lettuce on trains that don't work um <laughs> oh yeah straighten them right on out um uh, people you don't <laughs> you know trucks are i wish they respected them a little more um but <laughs> that's people well that's why you're here I mean, I, I I didn't really frame it out. I told you that I wanted to give the driver a voice, and I got a long term plan for this. But that's why we're talking right now. I want I want to bring respect and appreciation to the drivers of this country. This country would not operate without them, and people just don't realize that. You know, they get they get frustrated whenever you slow traffic down when you try to uh, you know safely exit the interstate and not roll over when you're going on the ramp. You know, going down the ramp and. Uh, you know, they get frustrated when you have to swing wide to make the same turn. Uh, and, uh, you know, they just don't know that, you know, you mentioned cabbage and lettuce and produce, you know, without without you, they can't walk in a, a grocery store and, and pick up a bell pepper and cut it up and, you know, make a pizza out of it, you know. So um, it's just that's that's just one of the things that I've, I've realized that. You know, God gave me the ability to run my mouth and get people to to listen. So, you know, I'm on a new path. And so uh, so I, I definitely agree with you. What's your favorite thing about trucking? Um, my favorite thing. Um, I've always been the kind of person to help others. I think that's one of my favorite things. Um Gosh, I, I love to travel. So that's that's a favorite thing. Um, I don't so much as like all the government uh, intervention. Um, and, 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 you know, you talk about the truckers um, that keep the country moving and we cannot forget our farmers. Our farmers are so important to us and, and, and they don't get enough credit. I remember when I was on Facebook and I'm not on Facebook anymore, but I remember this girl wrote, um, why do we need farmers when we can go to the grocery store? I was like, oh my God, you've got to help us, help us all. And I, my son, of course he's a millennial. And I asked him, I said, I must ask you this. I said, are people that naive to the farming industry? And I asked him, I told him what she had said. And he says, mom, he said, believe it or not, they really don't know. And I'm like, our farmers are just without the farmers, we would not have any food to eat. Um, I've seen them picking fields in California and other states and um, a lot of agriculture in California, of course, a lot of agriculture. Um, I never knew that until I started going there. And they're out there, they're working their rump off to feed this country with very little thank yous or appreciation. Um, and, you know, just like, you know, a lot of people, they get aggravated when we're pulling a hill and we're grossing 80,000 pounds. And, you know, of course we got to slow down. We're heavy and they get so frustrated and, you know, and, and it's like, wait a minute, you know, I mean, What's your hurry? Are you in a hurry to die a day today or what? I mean, I'm like, you know, why rush? You know, you got the rest of your life ahead of you. Why? What's your hurry? Yep. You know, that's interesting. Uh, 
I'm on a I'm on a mission for the truckers, but I grew up on working on a farm. I I worked in the uh, you know, I grew up riding in trucks my first part of my childhood. And then whenever I got old enough to drive a tractor, uh, I learned how to drive on a John Deere 2240, you know, in the tobacco fields. And uh and I worked on a farm right up until I was like 17, whenever I was old enough to get a public job. And then I got a job at the grocery store and I got my license. But yeah, I, I agree with you a thousand percent. I mean, without, you know, trucking and, and the farming industry, we die on a vine in a heartbeat, you know? Yeah. So. Our farmer. That's one thing I really hate it when the pandemic come through. Um, you know, they, the, the, they, the government does, uh, stands up and says, oh, these people are, um, they are, oh, what do they call them? Uh, they called us essential 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 workers yeah. oh my god i hated that word so much don't call me essential it takes the people in the warehouses it takes the people that are ringing up your gas your groceries your 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 convenience store clerks it takes everybody and i think a lot of people they overlook those people or look down on those people and those people are so important um, our trash people, our people that pick up our garbage, those people are so overlooked and, and those people are so important. And it just really irritates me when somebody says, well, they're essential. No, everyone is essential. You know, That's they had this, uh, it, you know, I, hindsight's twenty twenty, and I look back at the pandemic and, uh, you know, we had these healthcare heroes, right? Healthcare heroes. Yes. Um, but, you know, we didn't highlight the highway heroes, you know, um, I, I if I could have, you know, gone back in time, I, that that was one of, I would have did. I would have done that campaign, you know, highway heroes. Um, so what's your favorite? What's that? And, yeah. You know, the people, you know, the people working to keep us to let us allow us to get fuel and yeah. to allow us. Those people work very hard, too. And. It's a thankless, thankless job. And those people, they, they, they are just as important as anyone else. Yeah. Yeah. That, that whole ecosystem of blue collar professionals just all the time gets overlooked. Um, yes. So what's your favorite part of the country? And I think I know the answer to this because you told me one time. I like Maine a lot. I don't run there a lot. Um, yeah. I northern idaho i love the mountains um pretty much every i would say every state has its own beauty in its right. own way um even but there's the something about them sunsets though is it the sunrises or the sunsets that you love now i love both of those yeah if I'm on west it's the sunset if i'm coming east it's the sunrise yeah i love all those um we run into some really bad storms out in North Dakota. And actually, I love watching the beautiful lightning. And I know that sounds really weird, but it's really amazing to me. And I try to photograph it if I can. So, so there's a two part to this question. And it's, it's based on the craziest thing you've seen. So what is the craziest thing you've seen on the road? And what is the craziest thing you've seen off the road? One of the craziest things I've seen, um, well, I wouldn't say it's really crazy. There's too much texting going on. Um, okay. what, too much texting. Um, I have, well, I was sitting in a traffic jam one time and this guy, I mean, it was at a total stop only in California. He gets out <laughs> of his vehicle, starts whizzing right in the middle of the road. Of course, I couldn't see anything, but I got a picture of him. Actually, you can see the stream. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Only in California. Um, that was kind of, you know, kind of what I've seen people reading books on the steering wheel. Um, way oh, too much texting. Um, what was the second part? Off the road? Off the road. Um. Cause you know, you spend, you spend, you, you're, you're all across the country. So, you know, you, you're at truck stops, you're in and out of load yards and that type stuff. Uh, well, I mean, 
some of the signs they're putting in the bathrooms now showing people how to use them that's off the road um <laughs> it, it's 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 really just crazy i mean hey everybody's entitled to an opinion um so this next question is kind of a two part thing so what is the most scared you've ever been on the road and then the most scared you've ever been off road what were those situations the most scared I am on the road is motorcycles terrify me. I know oh, that's yeah. crazy. They terrify me, especially in California, because they, if you're in a traffic jam, they will go between the, the vehicles. And that terrifies me because, you know, my job is being safe. And to me, that's very unsafe. Um, motorcycles terrify me on the road. Um, off the road. I haven't heard that. I haven't heard that word in years. Motorcycle. That's what my daddy used to call him. Boy, you're going to get you a motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love it. yeah. They, they, they petrify me. I mean, they petrify me and you know, if they pass on the right, I mean, it's just like, you know, they don't realize we really can't see them very well. And unless they got a really one of them really hopped up loud Harley motors, you know, that about blow you out the truck. And then you can, you know, but they really petrify me. Um, but what about off the road? What, what about a situation where you off the road over, over your career that you were scared to death? Um, I can't really think of anything off the road. Um, I really can't touch Well, that's on good to hear. I mean, I you know, we've heard all kinds of stories. Um, but it's good to hear that you've been safe all these years and you haven't had to worry about that. Well, I mean, I think when you go into any city, you you know, you kind of watch in your back. Yeah, of course. Um, especially nowadays. Um, you definitely are watching. Um, but you know, I mean, I see so many pretty things off 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 the road like uh deer and wildlife and all those rainbows things. rainbows yeah you sent uh, me those pictures of the rainbows beautiful definitely. so crisp like it was it was it was not kind of a blur it was just so detailed yeah you see all kinds of stuff out there over in new york it was yeah. great so these last few questions kind of closing it out here what is your top? I'm not asking you to complain. I just want to know, like, what is your biggest challenge as a driver? What is your top problem? Hmm. I would say my, I would say one of my biggest pet peeves with it. I'm really not, well, I've got a couple, so it's really hard to say the biggest one. Um, I don't like, I wish the federal government would kind of back out of it a little bit. That's okay. that, that piece. But we do spend a lot of time at shippers and receivers. Um, a lot of people don't realize we don't get paid for that. We have to give them two hours and, and I don't care who you work for you. There might be a few companies that pay when you bump the dock, you start getting paid. But for the most part, most drivers have to give the company two hours free of charge to the shipper or receiver starts loading them or unloading them. Um, I think that, that that's a problem. And I think some shippers and receivers take advantage of that. And, you know, rather than going on and getting you unloaded and getting you out of there and understanding that's how you make your living. And, you know, and then I've been into some places, you know, 15 minutes late due to traffic or uh, whatever. I mean, I'm not one of them, goof around kind of gals and it's like they want to charge the company 120 bucks because you were 15 minutes late i have big big heartburn over stuff like that um you know at least an hour at least give us an hour because especially during construction season or we have two seasons we have winter and we have construction so <laughs> nothing's ever perfect you know nothing's ever perfect and that was what absolutely my coach tells me we have winter we have construction. So, you know, it's like, it, it's, it's never a, a perfect, if you will, scenario. 
So what is the most important thing to you as a driver? Safety. Love it. Safety. Always safety because you have a lot of weight. Um, a lot of people don't understand that it takes longer to stop an empty trailer than a loaded trailer. Um, I, safety is definitely first. I mean, um, and, and knock on wood, you try to be as, I, or me, per, I can only speak for me. I try to be as safe as I can. Um, but people do really stupid things because, you know, they get off from work. They're thinking about, well, let's see what I'm having. What am I having for dinner tonight? They're not paying attention. And I don't care how pretty that sunset or that sunrise is. They are playing on that cell phone. It's it's like people are so addicted to these cell phones and they're forgetting to enjoy the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful things that God put here that really don't cost anything except just to watch and look. And um, I have a big, big problem with that. I think people need to be more grateful. Um, and we've discussed this before. Grateful. That's I think, right. you know, I think, you know, sometimes, yeah, I do get aggravated at other drivers. I'd be lying if I didn't, because sometimes they can really get under your skin. But safety is such a big thing. And I mean, you try to be safe, but, you know, then you got this buzzer on your truck going every time, you know, if you're going through a lot of traffic, uh, Dallas Fort Worth is one of them. I hate going through there. I really despise it in the daytime. Um, but it's like your beeper starts going off. Well, here's this person that they, they'll cut your front end off, which I'm grateful for the front facing cameras for that reason. Um, but you know, people need to understand, you know, why are you in such a God awful hurry? I mean, are you in a hurry to lose your life today or kill somebody else? What is the point? I mean, I don't get it. I mean, yes. I mean, yes, sometimes we are in a hurry. But then when you sit back and think of the reality of it all, why are you rushing? T tomorrow's going to be here, hopefully. You got the rest of the day, you know. You, you And, you know, it'll tell us, live for today because tomorrow is mine. And, and I try to live for the day. Well, last question. All right. What can fleets, and I'm not talking about your specific fleet, but okay. what can, what is the, the top thing that comes to your mind that fleets can do that can make your life better on the road? Fleets. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to say the company that I work for has one of the best shops. I, I would put their shop above anybody's shop. Um, they have excellent shop. So we can't, we can't, I can't speak for other companies. Um, I don't like the interfacing cameras. That That is a big, big, uh, I have a big problem with that. Um, I, I know the point behind them to see what I'm doing. Right. But when you're on the road seven days a week or longer in some cases, that's your home. And to me, it's like invasion of your privacy. I have big issues with the interfacing cameras. Even though I have one in my truck, I try to ignore it. Um, it feels like you really can't talk freely. You really can't, you know, I mean, you don't want to call your banker while you're, while you're, you know, on your headset because you don't know who in the world's listening to you. Right. Um, I have big issues with the interfacing camera. And I do think that is an invasion of privacy because that is our home when we are trucking. Um, that's where we sleep. That's where we eat. Um, that's our home away from home. And the interfacing cameras, I have big heartburn about those. I understand why they do it. I understand that. But, you know, drivers for the most part i think drivers do the best they can i see way too much texting in the trucking industry i do i see way too much of it i don't do it personally my headset will text anybody i want to hands free right don't have to my phone um i think it puts everybody at danger i'm against it they don't catch me doing it because i don't do it um but i think you know the interfacing camera it's not i, I see their point but you feel like your privacy is very violated. 
Got it. And that's so, so your 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 suggestion to the fleets is, uh, consider uh, the truck driver's home when considering in interfacing cameras. Got it. Yes, and I mean, you know, it's like, do you have a camera in your bedroom or your home or your? Which, yeah, you got curtains between the front and the back, but I mean, they don't, I mean, or microphones even. I mean, all those cameras have microphones on them. I mean, you personally, would you feel comfortable talking with, you know, a microphone sitting there in your truck and you don't know when it's on? Got you it. don't even have it on. There's no lights yeah, on. I, to tell you. Well, I understand where you're coming from. It makes perfect sense, you know, and that and that's the purpose of of this interview is to, get suggestions out, get your voice out. Um, so, well, this has been a little treat. Uh, I really appreciate you taking time. Uh, and I appreciate, I, I mean, I say this from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for keeping this country moving because without y'all, it ain't moving. I think we know that. And you know what? We really appreciate you having our back. You got it. I we appreciate really you. Appreciate Take care. Be safe out there, Kara. Take I care. And thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. All right. Bye.